This program is a joint production of the Kimokeo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. Hello, Kakiaka o Maui. Mahalo again, and uh, welcome back to the Kimokeo Foundation Show. And uh, the foundation is about uh, preserving, perpetuating, education of our living Hawaiian culture on Maui Nuiokama. And so we're very uh, glad to have you again this morning. Our series uh, started from last week. It's about uh, the Ahamoku uh, on Maui. And uh, you've seen our guests last week. We had representatives from the Kula and Wailuku Moku. And today we are very fortunate to have uh, two other guests and uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. Aloha, I'm Aloha Lani Smith from Kaupo. I am the Ahamoku of Kaupo representative. Thank you for having me here. Mahalo, thank you so much for making such a long drive and yeah. be with us. So we know how difficult it can be, especially on these weather times. Mm -hmm. And uh, surprisingly, what can not happen to us at the uh, Kaupo section and uh, want the people to know that uh, it's raining and everybody be careful on the way to Kaupo. But uh, thank you for being here. Aloha Lani. It's my honor to have you with us. Hello, my kaku, uh, Kanilo Kamauna. Uh, I know you guys said uh, Foster Ampang from the Wailukumoku. So I, I'm with the Wailukumoku. Um, we've been together, I think she's almost or 10 years already, uh, working in uh, uh, Wailukumoku. I'm actually from uh, Wahei Valley uh, in that area. And, uh, you know, so happy to be here. Right on. Uh, thank uh, you really for great us. to have you. Uh, share with us uh, now the living uh, culture of us in there, or share what you want to share with us on the Wailuku Moku. I, I help with the water committee because we kind of split up into six committees, taking care of the resources, um, of course. And so, mine, uh, my kuleana, is to work with the water committee, and we've actually we've actually done uh, quite a bit of stuff. Um, we actually a couple of years ago uh, went up into the um, they refer to it as Wahei River. I refer to it as Kapuna because it's in the Kapuna area. But anyway, we went up to one of the areas, and we one of our people actually uh, found on YouTube how to take measurements without, you know, sophisticated instruments. So we put that all together. Um, it was basically with um, string, with a floater, uh, and with a measuring tape. And we were able to uh, also get the mathematical side from that, from that video. So we were able to put together data on how much water, the water flow, the speed, the depth of the water, and all these things. And we took an account of um, the different species of water life and plant life in the area. So it was a great activity. We had uh, a lot of the young people that came out. You know. So what we're trying to do is, of course, it's a community-based yeah. um, uh, organization. I hate to say organization, mm -hmm. it, it's more of the people's opportunity in, in the MOKU to come forward and to participate on how we can better uh, protect as well as use and to um, safeguard uh, the resources such as water, such as the air, um, quantity, uh, quality I should say, and the land use, as well as the shoreline and the uh, um, ocean itself. And one of the other things that I'm involved with is with the Iwi Kupuna. Um, you know, uh, luckily, or well, I shouldn't say luckily, but in Amoku, we've been inundated with the uh, fight on uh, preserving the Pu'one, uh, the sand dunes of, of, of Maui, you know, especially the burials. So, Taumoku has, has come, um, has helped in these areas in helping with 
supporting, helping with um, trying to keep those uh, resources and uh, our history uh, continuing and protected. Our kupuna, they, you know, people, people look mm -hmm. at our, our kupuna and they say, wow, these guys are fascinated, you know? But they weren't fascinated. They were, you know, where today people study in science and trying to find a theory of science. Well, our kupuna <laughs> was science. They lived it, yeah. Exactly as what you say, you know? So people should understand that uh, part of the ahomoku work, the six um, association or committees, they have, uh, you know, I always want to refer to Kauna, the deep secret meaning, healing of our kupuna work. And we, um, we uh, luckily, as uh, Kanaka Maole, that we inherit part of that with our blood and, you know, give us the kuleana to carry that on, you know, and especially all those who work in our moko. So I really credit everybody for um, being involved because uh, you really bring the real essence of the aina, uh, of the vai, of the ocean, of the mountain to uh, the people because a lot of them um, not doing research and you guys doing a lot of research and finding your research like how you did with the measurement, you know. So on the water now, and uh, once you get the data, where does this data go? You know, that, that came up in our meeting and what we were gonna do with it. We kind of kept it to ourselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, cause we didn't, um, we didn't want to send it out publicly, uh, kind of to safeguard, you know, what we have. And we use it basically to um, be aware of what's happening, especially just recently with that major storm that had come in. Um, you don't realize how much it changed the face of not only our, our river, but um, Wa'ehu and also uh, even Yao, I mean Wailuku, I should say. Um, you know, this was a very uh, different type of storm. Um, so much uh, this is the most I've seen for our river, where all the rocks, you know, usually you get the big ones, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you, you, know, you get the rocks moving, but this one had so much movement that this is the first time, and I've lived there pretty much my whole life, where I actually saw the, the smaller Puhaku actually fill up the river. I've never seen that before. You know, you, you see the movement, some changes, but this one was kind of drastic, and we lost a lot of our our um, banks, you know, especially on the upper part, and um, that area across from us in Kapuna, where they call, I think, um, River Road, yeah. they call it now. Um, they had an intake area that came right into the river, and um, that actually washed away. You know, so there was there's big changes in that area. So you know, it's good to have the data we have now. We got to go back and update and see where the changes, and to make sure that uh, uh, with the Navaiha case, that the water that's supposed to be flowing is actually there. Well, I think that's one of the whole Ilona, yeah, that uh, where, where people um, have diverted the water and change the force. And uh, my daughter lives right there on uh, Navaeha, uh, Hawaiian Homes, you mm -hmm. know. So she called me up and said, Dad, this road is closed, you know, and you ought to see these waters, you know. Okay. And so the water just came like nobody has seen before. You know, like you were saying, you lived there for a long, long time. So, you know, I, w I wouldn't uh, say that's, um, I would like to say that's one of the kupuna secret, yeah? <laughs> and that's the reason why the kupuna never had made any hale over there. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. when we had our hale, it was pretty much, the makaala, so they would build it pretty high, you know? Yeah. And so I, I told my daughter, that's the reason why some of the hale's don't belong over there. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was really scary because the road was closed, and the thing just went washed right over, you know? And, uh, but it was also happening in other parts of Maui, like Honokahau. They've never seen that before, where the water would just flow the whole valley, like the whole valley had water before, yes. which had water, and the house is on the banks, you know? So they wonder why um, the Loi was here and Holly was on the side. But, uh, you know, um, if we had uh, the smarts of our kupuna, we probably would not put the Holly where it belong. But uh, the other interesting part, because I know you did a lot of work with that, and uh, often know the, of the work in 
Um, it's really great what you're doing with the EV. You know? So share with them about the EV Kupuna because um, it's a very challenging t times for us to preserve our Kupuna. Yeah, you know, it, it's been an ongoing um, uh, challenge uh, for at least 10 years uh, with all the, you know, at one time I believe uh, part of the history was I think in the 1920s, um, A and B has control of that area, but they never did anything. And the reason they never did any construction or, you know, do what they were doing or they're doing now is because of the inundation of our Ivi Kupuna. Um, it's historically known that our people uh, bury in the sand. And, you know, it, it's no wonder why through all the developments, even through like uh, Bowling High School and, you know, up on the sand hills and, you know, um, you know down by, you know, Maui High, those areas, for years they've been finding Ivi Kupuna. Yeah. Uh, but nobody was nobody was um, basically addressing that, you know, uh, back then. So a lot of our EV, uh, basically, what people don't realize, when they uh, went to grade and do those things for preparation for construction, that a lot of them actually got bulldozed over. Um, they were actually, as we find out now, that they used that uh, the sand that they were getting there to. Uh, do construction work for cement, yeah? So a lot of our, our EV were being crushed. And I tell people, I said, you know, a lot of the cement work that you see here, especially the older ones, we, a kupuna is in there. And they said, uh, I said, yeah, if you research where does the cement come that they use, it came from these particular areas. And these areas, historically, even from our, our perspective, from our historians, relate that there are burials throughout this area. And even from, you know, in our era, because uh, I went to measure or kind of take an estimate of how far and wide the Pu'oni goes. So it goes from Waikapu, um, spreads out down towards, uh, uh, almost towards Kulamakai, uh, which is going towards Kihe, and it goes out to Spreckelsville. So it, it, it takes over all of Kahului, goes out towards Spreckelsville, and then uh, it comes back to uh, Pakukalo goes out to Waehu and then out to Wa uh, Kapuna, actually, mm -hmm. and then, you know, all the way back. So it was about 12 miles, 12 miles long and about another 10 or 11 miles wide. And when you read the, you know, the history, especially of Kamakau, he talks about the Battle of Kakanilua. He says that they fought uphill all day. You know, they did that for two days. So to be uphill and to fight that all day had to be quite quite high, quite large. And if you go towards like, um, you know, if you were to stand at Lower Main, where Homie Bakery is, and you look up, and you see all Pony Terrace and all. So if you look at that, and they're on top of a hill that's already cut, how much higher or taller were those hills? Some estimate maybe two, 250, 300 feet. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's significant. It was a significant uh, 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 feature that only Maui had. Uh, it had the EV Kupuna, and, uh, you know, we've been firstly trying to fight to save the last remnants of the dunes in the central area. Because if you go out to, um, in, in the central area, Kahului, majority of it has been cut down. It's all been cut down, it's all been graded. As we know through uh, last year's uh, news report, a lot of it was taken to go help with the, with the rail project that they were doing on Oahu. And so all of that, and the last portion that we have is um, running on that Kuikahi Road. Um, and that's up for sale right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, part of it is being developed by Maui Land, I mean, Maui Lani Partners. And we're trying to save that portion because it has barrels, they found the barrels, and we wanted them to basically leave it because after that's gone, there is, there is no uh, sign of the dunes that once remained there. And in that area is a specific battle of Kokanilua, which is between Kalaneo Pu'u and Kahikili in uh, 1776. 
you know, and a lot of the warriors, the thing uh, significant was a lot of the warriors, after the battle, uh, Kahikili let them stay there, the warriors from Big Island, to be assigned to everyone that you come battle here, this is what you're going to come to. And so he let their bodies decay on top of the pony. So I, when I go to the meetings and I tell the people, so how are we supposed to separate the sand from the man? I said, if it's true that these people bled out here, that they, de you know, their bodies were decayed, for us, the ano, yeah? The essence of the person now lives in the sand. So the sand and the person is now one. And to take it away now is a total desecration because, you know, that's the that's a person's final place that he gave his life for his people, for his, for his, his uh, um, for his king, you know, all these things. And this history is, is basically being taken away. And we've been battling, we, we went to court this past year, we got part of it. Um, the judge uh, told us if uh, we had to go seek remedy with the, with the uh, county and state and all these other places to get remedy. But he said, if we cannot get remedy, that we have the opportunity to come back to court and and get remedy that way. So it's it's been it's been a kind of a lot. Yeah, I of think you made. I think the Aumoku made great improvement, or the people have made great improvement, yep. because there's a halt to uh, continuous going on without um, uh, rules and regulation to be imposed on. Right. You know, right. and unfortunately, the rules and regulation came so late that uh, previous uh, work didn't allow us to do that, and now it allows, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think this is why it's important that uh, Ahomoku educate the public, you know, and let them know the work, because when you talk about the battle of Kekanalua, you know, I mean, there's so much things into that, so many people, so many things. Yeah. And like you said, that uh, Kahikili left them just on the sand, you know what I mean? Yeah. And be here, and over the years, we know that the sand dunes, like Kihei, he just blow right across the road to get covered. <laughs> so, you know, when you talk yeah. two, three hundred feet, you know, in the years to come, so they, you, you know, and I don't know it myself, I haven't experienced, but I do know about some reports that they found them as deep as 40 to 60 foot, the EV, oh, yeah. in the sand yeah. dunes. Yeah. You know, people should understand that, you know, that's how much sand throughout the years. And when you, when you express to them, oh, two, three hundred feet, you know, um, it's pretty huge, three hundred feet, if you have nothing around it, you know. Yeah. But even looking at from Wahe, um, all the way up, to the heights area, you can see from the beach, the sand dunes is already a couple yep. hundred feet. Yep. You know, so there's places that uh, didn't develop that we have uh, the Puone, you know what I mean? And if you even drive to Kahamano Avenue on the right where um, University of Hawaii Maui is, that's the Puone. Yep. And on the left is a Puone. Yep. But, you know, when you look from that all the way up, what you're talking about, all the way up to Low Main, so the, the, the bottom would be from there all the way yeah. up to the bridge. Yeah, crazy, you know, yeah. The, the so pretty crazy. Yeah. And uh, more so that uh, when we look at uh, some of our uh, kupuna work, you know, we only look at, say they're gonna develop here, only one section. When all the other sections you talk about from Kihei to Spreckosville is all one piece. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not like one, one place here, one place there. And so now they're looking at the greater look, how it's joined up together. Yeah, and we, we have to kind of, um, you know, thank the Ahamoku for uh, coming coming forward and supporting us, uh, you know, uh, Keomoku, uh, Kapu, and a lot of the members of the Wailuku Moku, as well as other members from, you know, the other Mokus who have come to support, um, you know, the, the, the saving of our, our, our historic area. Um, and you know, with the uh, Ahamoku, actually um, Ellie Cochran, uh, Don Guzman are looking to implement um, use of the Ahamoku. Awesome. You know, to uh, be in consultation, especially when it's sensitive areas such yeah. as you know the burial sites and stuff. So, yeah, we're moving along. You know, I mean, uh, like you said. You know, too bad it's you know so so late in coming, but at least it's. Well, I think it's coming. Just, it's, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah. Uh, more than just a beginning and a start. You know, you're yeah. you're making a a big strive into uh, 
the government to realize that um, this is the way it is. And uh, we, you know, especially the, the Ahomoku and the groups that's in the yeah. Ahomoku coming forward and uh, yeah, sharing with what's right, you know. And uh, it's been a long waiting, but at least it's coming and going, you know. Yeah, we have, we're lucky, you know, we have, we have a lot of dedicated, and I have to say, a lot of dedicated wahine that, you know, the thing about the wahine is, is they tenacious. You know, once they get on something and they put their mind to them, you know, there's nothing stopping them. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes us guys, we're a little bit more, uh, we're a little bit more, uh, how can I say, uh, maybe homie to me a little bit, you know, whereas women, you know, they kind of see where the point is and that's where they're going to go. Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, we've been lucky to have a lot of input from our, our wahine, um, you know, uh, in this in this subject matter, uh, you know, it would be nice to have Mukani, you yeah. know, uh, uh, be more active. But the ones we do have, you know, we're grateful for, you know, all of the work that everybody does. I think we're blessed to have them. Yeah, they're so um, cool. They stand cool. They stand strong. They stand consistent. Yeah, and uh, they find some things that we don't find as far <laughs> yeah. as information because of their, uh, I wouldn't say stubborn head, but. They, they just stay on it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, next day they'll ask you the same question, you know what to answer, actually the next question, <laughs> and expect you to have the answer. And if you yeah. don't, then they're gonna find it for us. Yeah. So mahalo for that, you know? And, uh, you know, so that's uh, just part of, you know, six of the committees, the, the, the water committee and the EV committee. But, you know, that was uh, Wailuku and Kula, so really great that we follow up, you know, on yeah. that. And. Uh, so this morning we also have with us Aloelani Smith with uh, the Moku of Kaupo. So Aloelani, please uh, share with uh, Ohana on Maui your, your yeah. work. Well, yeah, um, I'd like to go back and, and kind of make it simplified for most that the Ahamoku is the ancient system back in thousands of years that when the state, America, took over Hawaii, they adopted it and it is known as DLNR today. Oh, okay, okay. So as you can see, they have their divisions. We have our committees, right. the same thing. Um, what we are, again, is from the bottom to the top. So it is the communities. And our job as representatives, uh, we're autonomous to everything else. We are focused on community base. And, and so with that, Kaupo, not like Wailuku, we hardly have water. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't start a baseline in Kaupo for water. Um, they did have, back in the days, a, a, a huge water table, but during all these earthquakes, it cracked mm. and the, the water aquifer. disappeared. So there's only one intake that we actually have the community on. Um, for me, I, I kind of put my co committees together and I'm like, okay, what can we you know, achieve? Because we have a lot of cliffs. Right. We have 10 miles of cliffs. So. The only two areas we could really target was Nu'u and then Mokulau. Yeah. And so what it is today is we have part of the Ahapua'a people on that side watching that area, and our side we watch on Nu'u. So we have our little committees, our shoreline committees, and uh, land, because uh, a lot of Kaupo is really unique. Uh, we have mostly cattle. Um, we have farmers out there, so it's more ag-related. Uh, uh, we have a lot of cultural sites out there, and as you know, we have the heiaos out there. And so when I put, put the community together, uh, you know, I asked them, what committees would we want to target? You know, we, we talked about the rock walls on the highway. We want to protect it from them widening because it's more than 50 years old, so we wanted to get it registered. So. Those are the things that when I pulled everybody together, I gave them, you know, the decision what kind of committees and who wants to be in there. But the problem in Kaupo is we're very sparse. Population is only, what, 45? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it, it was hard to put committees all together with particular parties, so we decided we become one. Okay. So when there was something that came up, for, uh, like the water, we had an issue with the water meters um, being, being told to us, it's non-potable, but if ever caught, they would remove it immediately. No warnings, no nothing. So we got on the horn. I submitted news and information, and we actually you know, approached the public uh, works that, you know, hey, 
how can we work with this? Uh, when they they were gonna go ahead and pave the, uh, they call it the Nua Nua, uh, Nua Nua, not Nua Nua, excuse me, Pu'u Maneo Neo, the hill that goes up from Nu'u. Yeah. Okay, so that hill in particular was so bad on the road. So this is, you know, land committee. And so what happened is uh, the county wanted to pave it. So they gave us the notice, we were all excited because that's that's really the, the, the neck jerker. So we said, okay, we're all excited for it. Then they gave us a letter just like two days after and said, we're not gonna pave it. Oh, we. So I got on the horn again, I call it the Kaupoen News, and I, I submit to everybody. I have about 120 people on my, my email contacts, and everybody wrote letters. You know, so this is how we can do it, you know, in, in our sparse uh, village, mm -hmm. if you would say. But, you know, just being out there, being the eyes, you know, being the ears and, and keeping everybody informed is really important. Uh, I, have, uh, I have gotten the, the couple school for the community. I had done a proposal with DLNR Land Division back in 2011. And uh, I guess they wanted a nonprofit, which we are not. We're, you know, lawful. We're in Act 212. So by getting the community together, I, I had put the association together. We had an interim board. I became the president at that time. And we spearheaded everything. So we got that taken care of. And then now I'm working down at Nu'u, working with Hawaiian Island Land Trust, because there's our shoreline there, you know. And uh, because we have historical sites there and so forth, I came up with the Hale Pa'akai to build a cultural Hale so that we could bring education into our community. Um, also, you know, not, not only to make it educational, but fun, you know, to have kids come from schools, they get educated, they get to play by the ocean shoreline, they get to go and look and discover, you know, some of the arc sites and so forth. So this, this was something that I just uh, spearheaded. And um, because Hawaiian Island Land Trust is low on staff at the time, it was put on hold. So that's fine because it gives us time to build, you know. But we partnership with everybody there. Uh, it, it's a great deal because to collaborate and, and not have the manpower, but by having the partnership, we bring others in mm. to work together. And so that, that had, um, that had just worked off really well. Uh, we also have a code of conduct in Kaupo that I had put together with our association, and, and so I also have it down there at the Nu'u location, the refuge location. Well, see, I think that people should understand how each moko is not the same. Right. And each moko has different challenges. And I, I don't say challenges in a bad way, I say challenges of things that uh, you just said it again, and it goes on and on about. It takes a village to do Mokulao and Nu'u, you know, mm -hmm. and having a partnership with Hawaii Land Trust, I think that's really, really great, you know, mm -hmm. how you can uh, work with outside people to come in and help to build a uh, fun and educational spot, you know, especially the Halipa'akai, you know, right. uh, down there. So I think that they, people would understand that, you know, village is uh, not like a, a no man people, village is really mm -hmm. a deep work of what you're talking of, the 120 people you have listed on right. the on the email list because it takes those people to get together, you know. Uh, but you know we're going to take a break and we we're going to save that thought and we're going to come back. This program is a joint production of the Kimokeo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. So Aloilani, uh, thank you so much again. Uh, you were sharing about Hawaii Land Trust, so can you tell us how this partnership came about with Hawaii Land Trust? Because uh, Hawaii Land Trust has um, several things going on on your area, you know? Right. Yeah, well, um, it was it's really interesting because when I got the community association together, uh, Scott Fisher had approached us and uh, wanted to talk to the community and explain what Hawaiian Island Land Trust is doing there in Kaupo at Nu'u. 
uh, that um, he would like to collaborate and and pull everybody in to help them as well to maintain the area because you know they can only be the, be over there so many a times but you know most times we have all the kolohis coming in yeah. right and stuff so you know land and ocean to speak so he was asking us if we could help and so we had a meeting oh gosh a community meeting back in february 2014 he came on board i i had introduced the ahamoku and you know motioned the fact that hey can we work as the association and ahamoku to help Hawaiian Island Land Trust with the issues and that we, we can actually have an area to have a recreation, um, a gathering, you know, and so forth. So another one besides the school. And so that, that was great. The community, there was 17 versus four. 17 supported it, four did not. And so we moved forward, Scott and I, and you know, he was telling me, okay, um, what, what do you see? We have so much desecration going on. You know, we could help if this and that. So I said, why don't we start a code of conduct? You know, a non-regulatory list to help others that come. They enjoy the, the place and space so that they can also behave properly, hopefully, right? So uh, I got on the horn. I contacted everybody again. I said, hey, they're giving us the opportunity. You guys want to join in? Let's get some ideas pulled together. So when you go down there, we, we completed the whole thing. It's a huge sign, it's about four feet tall. And they've got it up on the uh, Keave tree, two signs in the area. But since then, it's been really good because others who's coming in are, are knowing that, oh, the community is kind of like watching the area too. And when others like us go over there, and you know, that's the only place we can swim and enjoy the day, when we see something, we report it in immediately. So that, that has helped uh, Hawaiian Island Land Trust really well, and, and they're very thankful. So when the Halipa'akai came into play, they're like, hey, that is a good idea. It had to go to their board first to get the approval, and they granted it. And so, you know, we were working towards it, and things came up and, and so forth. But, you know, just collaborating with others, we also have, there's an archaeology, um, uh, wait, there's a company, I want to say Pohaku Cultural Tours. Uh, they are there not to bring in any of the tourists. They are bringing in people to educate them about the arc sites around the area. Yeah, show them something. And um, they're, it's small, it's not huge. And that became a concern with the community. But once they were invited to the association meeting, they had explained it out to them, you know, and there wasn't, it, people had concerns, although they, they weren't upset at it. So they, they still continue doing that business down there, which is good, because there's other eyes down there too when they're there. And it's very small, like only two people. Well, I think you brought up some really important thing. Uh, first of all, I think communication, kuka kuka, mm -hmm. with the partners and uh, making each one responsible for what they say they're gonna do and do it, you know? Like you right. said, the Pohaku tour coming in with bringing people to educate. And I think the code of conduct about the two signs, you know, making people aware um, this is a cultural uh, spot and this is what we try to preserve. So, you know, take care of it as we, we're doing, you know, kind of right. thing. So I think the code of conduct for each of uh, uh, the mokos, uh, you know, letting the public know because there's some places that it's just no, no management, no rules, and they just think that's what they can do. You know, mm -hmm. they see a place like Nuo, they think, wow, this is a open range. I can just do whatever I want with a four-wheel drive or just trash the place and things like that, you know. Right. So I think with the code of conduct, just making people aware, and then with Pohaku Tours, um, having more more eyes and more management right. when, uh, when, uh, when uh, the village cannot be there, you know what exactly. I mean? I think uh, we cannot be there all the time, so just having them uh, aware. And you know, we, we had that example with you where we were gonna clean your law and to contact you guys and have a, a cultural protocol. And so we was really fortunate to hear from you, um, not as an advocacy, but an understanding, hey, you guys come into Kapo, so what's up, you know? <laughs> and I think that it made us balance and reach out to uh, Kahu Lines to do the protocol because I wasn't able to do that. So right. I think that kind of things is really important for everybody to know. But most important is that uh, the Aomoku is a, is a positive group working with the community, right. you know, and getting uh, information to everybody, 
and making, uh, I shouldn't say making things right, but learning what was supposed to be right and how to do it now. You know what I mean? Because it was right before. You know, when you said earlier part, you know, the system was, is an ancient um, management system and uh, it's really DLNR. And today, you know, when last week when uh, uh, Apong and Foster and um, Vernon explained to me how the Moku reports to the island rep, which is Kea Moku, Kapu, and then Kea Moku reports to the state rep with Nakanilua, and then Nakanilua reports to the LNR. Okay. So I think that's uh, what was said. So I think people should know that how we still working, you know, what it was, and just that now it sh should be done how it was before, and then more, mm -hmm. more cohesive mm -hmm. if that like the representative, you know, of the community. You talking to the community, and you getting all the feedback of, like you said, four voted no, this much voted yes, and then you guys move ahead and, you know, go with what you think is right for the community. Okay. But I think people should uh, know more than that because, you know, I was um, fortunate enough to see the work of the Kaupo Ohana at Hui Aloha. So explain about there's some projects that you guys doing, you know, one was the Hui Aloha, and now you guys are doing the couple school, you know, as a community. Oh, but, yeah, that, but, it's great. You I know, think. so share with them the Hui Aloha, because this is, again, you know, taking a village and taking outside help. I mean, I, I'm not saying outside of the, <laughs> the, but more people helping the community in the same page, you know. We want to preserve, we want to perpetuate, and we want to educate, you know, right. of the development, you know. Because I think it's such a big deal for me that, personally, you know, that we doing the renovation or rehabilitation of Hui Aloha, you know, because we have on, on of course, you know, South Shores, we have all kind of stuff going on. But in Kaupo, we, here we have what should be done, you know, and develop and uh, rehabilitate the Hui Aloha. So explain to them how this came about, because you guys did uh, a lot of work, and, and today everybody on Maui can be proud of one of our our churches that uh, did a, a restoration. Yeah, Hui Aloha was such a great uh, project for the community. I mean, didn't matter what religion you were, all domina um, denominations came down and everybody, was, it, it was like good old days, you know, when somebody needed help, everybody, the whole village came down. And it, it was a, a time of unity because we don't have that nowadays. We're so busy today and uh, uh, Stefan, he was one of the guys that spearheaded. He's no longer with us, and we're really sad. We miss him. Uh, but he was one that helped to spearhead everything. But Uncle Changa, you know, the Kahale Aukis out there. We have the Fongs. We, we have the uh, Wongs, Wendell Dam. We have just all the families and the ones that hardly come out. We had the Bices and so forth. But it was great, a, a great effort, and to see that the church was accomplished from the floors to the roof, it, it, it was closure for a lot of us because of the fact that we knew it was having a hardships, you know, when the weather was, because it's getting pounded all the time with yeah. the wind and the salt and, and so forth, so that was really good for the whole community to gather and, and, and just enjoy, so now they also have new times to go down and visit the area. So it's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and they, they lock the gate because we, we get too much kolohe. Yeah. I mean, a car is being burnt out there. It's, it's ridiculous, you know. So that's how we help to maintain that portion too because it was getting, you know, people were getting stuck going down what there. What is the value of the Ahomoku helping right. deal in our uh, manage the areas, you know? Correct. Even right. though it's not their particular area personally, but it's one of the management satellite program where you say six to six. And so is the county. They cannot allow people to come in the parks because they don't take care. Right. And so we want to make sure. That, but I think the key point is you were saying community and what it did, it bonded all of the Kaupo community with all the help they had with other people to realize that um, this is one of the jewels of Maui in Kaupo, Hui Aloha. You know, and uh, that the, those efforts got so so overwhelmed that the, the energy got so high, and I understand that you guys are doing the Kaupo School now, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, working with the state or somebody uh, to um, re, uh, renovate Restore. the school, you know. Yeah, that came up, because um, this is the third attempt. This is not something new. So we go back to the first board 
uh, which was, um, gosh, I, I, hate, I don't want to say names, but anyway, from the first attempt, they've tried. Then the second attempt, we, we tried again. We couldn't get the funding. Um, this attempt, when I came to DLNR, the land, land division, I had put and proposed that I wanted to, I wanted to restore and restructure with the community to complete it at least, a third attempt, right? To complete these structures. And by doing that, I had to put an association together. Of course, you know, the money would trickle in. So that's where I had accomplished getting all that taken care of. And so <clears throat> I'm no longer with the association because I have too many hats. I'm with Red Cross, Ahamoku, I have a business. So I had resigned knowing that the board now can actually take it from where. So I'm very happy to see that, yeah, they're doing the work that, you know, I, I wanted to have the community complete. So uh, right now, I don't know what the plans are. Um, I, I know we're getting there, but I think we have a $1.3 million. Uh, the state gave most of that. Well, so. that's, that's, that's what they call, um, takes the village, yeah? <laughs> yeah you know, and you know, when you talk about, you know, take three times, so uh, people should know that three times today is very short mm -hmm. than what our kupuna had, which is thousands of years mm -hmm. of trying to uh, maintain that. So, so right. I think that's really expedient when you say that, uh, or it took us three times, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, uh, and I think that's really great all the attempt they make, and then now they're coming up to with the funds available, yes. and now they can again uh, call upon the community we call Kahia, and the community yes. come. And you, we know what happened with Hui Aloha, and uh, we know that this will bond the community again. Exactly. And so I think people should understand, you know, when we talk about uh, the moku of Kaupo and the development of Kaupo, isn't that so great that we have eight Hui Aloha Church and now we have a school, and people should know yep. that's pretty much what we have in Kaupo. Right. You know, and then you talk about the cliffs, and then you talk about the, the walls, and you talk about archaeological sites, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I think that uh, people should know that, you know, um, even though it's a, a smaller community, it's really, really an important community right. to the whole Mokopuni, you know, because when you talk about the cliffs, well, some guys don't have the cliffs like we, we, you have in Kapo. Uh, when you talk about Stefan, that's uh, Re Resta's son, is it Resta's yeah. son? Uh. Piero? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, Stefan is the one with the, with the tangerine tree house. He lives um, Makai side, that's Stefan. It's the Pu'u Honua. Pu'u Honua. Yeah, that's Yeah, so, I mean, you know, uh, he's gone now, but uh, credit to that kind of people to have been around to, um, share and work and to make sure these things go on. So I think people um, get to understand is we do more of these uh, discussions on the Moku that it's everybody included. Right. You know? So not only included uh, to uh, such uh, uh, what we had in Kapo, but more so taking possession of preserving, perpetuating, educating a culture, like you said now, the Halipakai, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's a great thing that's happening in Kaupo, uh, a great watch on the community, mm -hmm. as well as we have Aramokus uh, doing the same thing. So right. I think that um, it's so great for such a moku to take um, value of its uh, church, its school, um, its archaeological sites, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that we didn't touch on. So, I mean, you know, uh, Kaupo has uh, uh, some of the greatest sites on Maui, you know, like Loa Loa, you know, and it's very uh, huge, uh, you know, and that's the partnership between the community, national parks, and Kaupo Ranch, you know. So when we talk community, we're talking about the larger base community, you know, and uh, so it's really great that uh, the moku of Kaupo, and, uh, you know, we didn't get to the ocean side, so share with us on the ocean because uh, people should understand that, uh, you know, uh, Momona Moana, you know, because, uh, you know, that's part of the the people in Kaupo, that's part of the icebox, you know? Yes. And uh, people should understand that because uh, it's not easy to travel back and forth to Kaupo uh, to come to and fro into Kahului, so mm -hmm. some of the some of the uh, things that we have, you know, and that uh, was left behind for Kupuna, for the Mo'opuna, 
you know, and uh, they should uh, malama that, you know? Right. You know, so talk about the, the Moana, because uh, even though you have 10 miles of cliff, now you have the wide ocean, ocean, you know, and then, uh, so talk about that, please. So our ocean, yeah, we have a lot of people coming out. I mean, we, we don't see most of them, and the reason is they come by boat, they come by jet skis. Um, I've noticed that others come during, you know, like three o'clock in the morning so they can, you know, go and collect, I guess, at night. But um, we do have, you know, uh, s some of the locals that are there, they'll go out and fish and then they'll bring and then they'll check with the kupunas. My sister comes out all the way from Wailuku so that she can go. And what she does too is maheli to us if we don't want because we get too much. <laughs> We, she takes it home and mahele to our kupunas because they all know for this kinds of stuff, yeah, but they cannot do it anymore. So it's, it's really nice that we can get others to share. Uh, what we have noticed is that we've been having people coming in and trying to um, launch out of Kaupo, and we had to put a stop to that because that is no longer, you know, it's lawful that you can't do it. So we had to educate the public as they were coming in. I mean, we, of course, we welcome people to come on in, and they're, you know, we kind of go down there to monitor, but we got to also teach them what, what they can and cannot do there. And then by doing that, you just bond with the people. You know, you kind of, and, and my job too is to go, hey, so what are you guys out here for? What are you catching? What do, we, what do you catch? So I'm getting data. <laughs> cool. You know, I'm getting information. I, I'm, I'm hearing what, what they're going through. And, you know, most of the times we tell them, you guys not here for commercial purposes, yeah? You cannot get and then go sell because it is our icebox. And not only ours, we have families from all over the island. So they come home and they go and gather themselves too. So, you know, we, we keep our eyes on it, and we just had some information, <coughs> a little bit disturbing, but we're finding out that people are planting buoys, and these are commercial companies, planting buoys on the outside of our perimeter to whereas there's, uh, you know, holes for a coolie and all this. So that's a new challenge that we're discovering and that um, we're working on it. Yeah, well, I know. think that's important uh, that uh, people understand that you know, um, not only Malamu Hunua, but Malamu Moana, you know, mm -hmm. uh, take care of ocean because uh, it's always been our kupuna icebox and now it's the moopuna icebox or our icebox and people should understand that, uh, you know, um, that's the living village, you know, um, going out and they should uh, leave that for the village people. And I, I hope that uh, DLNR, and I do know DLNR is aware and do know they're working yeah. with that because uh, you know, when we have a Molokai Channel canoe race over in uh, Molokai, all the escort boats are allowed, was told, you know, courteously, don't fish coming over, don't fish around Molokai, you know, because that's left for them. So I know we had an incident there, but people need yeah. to understand, you know, yeah. uh, need, need not to get to that situation. They just need to help us manage it together, you know what I mean? Right. And I think that uh, there's enough education out not only with the LNR, but with Ahomoku and the village, you know. And I, think, I don't think we want to get into a situation with battling over the I resources. Know. There's no need for that. And then people should uh, just pay respect, you know. And I think that one of the things I, I, I want to address on the show that, you know, the, the visitor industry is large, you know. And uh, we, we're asking the rental cars and the industry to help us, you know, get the message out, you know, about uh, the code of conduct, you know. I know they. The, I know they print a lot of maps, so they can print, you know, the code of conduct right. of the Aomoku. and uh, maybe someday the rental cars or somebody who's making all these maps can really make the the map that of the Ahomoku and right. the resources in there. You know, um, I look back when the Hawaii Visitors Bureau had a King Kamehameha signs, you know, and now we changed to the Ahomoku. So I think people should understand the saying on it because. Um, you know, we all we all need we we all held accountable right. to keep uh, Hawaii um, valuable, and it's only going to be valuable by what the work of Ahomoku and the, the village doing. You know, preserving right. open space, preserving the the enrichment of our flora and fauna, uh, Waiolo Kani. You know, uh, people should understand that the waters are sacred to us. You know, a water of life, and uh, not only water of life for us to drink, but 
what happened to Kaupo, uh, you know, having the aquifer uh, damage like that, and it, it costs now, you know, a lot of situation to happen. Yeah. And some of that is unrepairable, you know. Yeah. And same with, uh, with uh, Kamano, you know, Kaneloa, Kaneloa that you talking about the EV, you know. So I think uh, the work is um, a good work because we're, we're looking at, again, you know, it takes a village to uh, protect our waters or share our waters, protect the uh, EV, uh, protect the rich, rich uh, part of our, our development, yes. where lower church and the school because that's what we have. And that's, that's what, you know, <laughs> it's not like we have everything else, but <laughs> we do have a lot of archeological sites that people should, uh, you know, not go overrun it or, or get into it that they're not allowed or, per, you know. Right. And there's some places you can go and some places they cannot go. So they should know all the places, you know, you know, kind of thing. But uh, Kamano, you can share anything about Kapo area, your Ohana? Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it, we used to go out in that area. I think once we actually took the Boy Scouts, we actually hiked from the top of the summit, and we walked down to Kapu Church. And, you know, it was a magnificent uh, hike. I think we did it, I think we started like 7.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and we actually got there. I think we finally got down. Um, about five o'clock in the afternoon or in the evening. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, coming from Kapo Gap, wow, that's a, that is a beautiful area. I yeah. mean, you're standing up there, you know, up from Haleakalan, you're looking down, and you know, it's, you, you know, that's like, you know, for us, it's probably once in a lifetime, because, you, you know, I mean, you know, uh, we had a couple of guys that did them twice, and, uh, but, you know, to go and see that and, you know, see all the untouched um, areas. You know, reminds me of when I was younger in Wahe because, you know, Wahe is was almost like going to focus and after like there, you know what I mean? They call us the sticks, you know what I mean? You know, so we had all that and, you know, and I came and we look, it's like, wow, you know, I think take you back. You know, you see the ocean, no one, no, no one out there on the ocean, you know what I mean? That, you think huh? just open, everything open, you know what I mean? It's like, wow. You know, you see the cows running around, you know, it's like, you know, it's it's awesome. It was, it's beautiful to come down there. And you know, so many times you're going to, um, you know, Hana coming to the other side, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're just in another world when you're over there. And it's funny because uh, one time we had to go do something out there, we play music, I think. And we came out to the backside and a guy who was driving, he went by focus. So, you know, he had time see, but he the driver. Eh? Yeah. And so <laughs> funny, because <laughs> we're driving in line, and here comes a car across the road. Oh, you know, so luck, you know, luckily we could see, you know, but it, it, but you know, that takes you back to, uh, that takes you back, you know, when you go there, I think just take you back to when you were some. I walked out, I walked out, that walk you guys did, it was breathtaking. But I want to yeah. share with both of you, yeah. Um, we always come home after Queen Lily Okalani race. This is going to be our 15th year after the race we paddle home. Ooh. So um, throughout the years, um, we've had uh, some really um, challenging times out there, but we had learned a lot from our kupuna, yeah? Um, uh, Joanne Kahanamoku, um, oh, yeah. we talk about, um, what's her name, Sterling? She's up Donna. at Donna's husband, Leon. Leon. Yeah. And so the kupuna shared with us about uh, how to travel with the va'a from Mahukona to Kanikawila. Mm -hmm. And they share with us about when the volcano erupts, you come to Kanikawila, put your water in the hand, the, warm, the water warm. So how the lava tube is connected from Big Island to there. Wow. And uh, they talk to about the, the Nalu. When the Nalu come this way, go that way. And it was that. So the Kupuna had all this knowledge, you know, connected yeah. with Pele, how she would take us home right to uh, Kanikawila and bring us back to Wailea. And uh, I want to pay a tribute to my uncle Manny Vincent, who is in uh, Kwai Hai Canoe Club. He only take Wahinis, go across from Kwai Hai to uh, Maui. He came to Nu'u, was his first voyage. Oh. Then his next voyage was to Makana. Then his third voyage was to Hana. And the only reason he bought uh, Wahinis is what uh, about you talk about, the battle of Kanikailua. Kani, what is it now? Uh, Kakanilua. Kakanilua, excuse me. The battle of Kakanilua and the understanding that uh, King Kamehameha uh, warriors 
are there, and the women came to get the EV to go back home. You know what I mean? And so to today, they still paddle only with women coming across wow. the channel of wow. Ka'ali Nui Ha'a. You know what I mean? And uh, I gotta tell you, we uh, always use Kaupo Gap as a navigation point, mm -hmm. and then we use uh, Lua Lai Lua as another navigation point because we can see the Mauna, but we can see the flat. We can never see mm -hmm. the flat, you know? Um, so, you know, the greater expansion of the Moku is all the way, you know, people wondering, you know, why we so much about the ocean. It's really from the heavens to the Akua Vau onto Down. the ocean, you know? So people should understand that the ancient system is management is like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to have both of you guys uh, on uh, the Kimokeo Foundation uh, show Thank you. to Thank share you. the mana'o of the our moku, you know? And uh, because it's really important because you guys bring uh, the deep secret parts of our uh, moku, you know, working mm -hmm. with uh, 120 people on the email, you know, um, and working with the, the water system. You know, our work goes back thousands of years yeah. now, and we were not a thousand <laughs> because right. the Aomoko system is coming into place, you know? It's in place, and now it's gonna just ulu. You know, uh, Nana Viri, uh, in her book, she said, Ikananeo ao aeo oe kaulo. As we plant the seed, we will grow with the seed, you know? And, and that's what you guys do, so. Mahalo for being on the Kimokeo Foundation show. This program is a joint production of the Kimokeo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowdfunded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org.